Right, hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 and today we're going to be doing the Indian moon mission that has successfully just um, landed on the moon on this at the South Pole. Yeah, we're going to try and recreate that in Kerbal Space Program 2 with some difficulty here. You can see here I am just in the building stage trying to get it to look sort of realistic with what parts you have in Kerbal Space Program. It was a challenge. It was, uh, I had to use, make use of some panel parts and sort of design my own thing with the cargo bay because I wanted that little rover to pop out as well. So yes, this is the Ice Row uh, Chandra, Chandrian moon mission. I can't, I can't honestly pronounce it. Three. I, I'm not going to even try and pronounce it. You know from the title what it is. So yeah, here we are just using a cargo area and boxing it in, and there you go. I just skipped ahead a little bit because I messed about quite a lot with different parts to get the same short sort of shape. And on the top there, you can see I've just put a fuel tank, which will have the fuel for the landing stage. Some cider engines and landing gear, and then I'm just creating a row over here, just a little rover to go on the inside with an antenna. Uh, solar panel angled as it is on the real thing and I thought using a docking port would be a good idea here to you know mount this thing so we can take it out but turns out it just doesn't want to work in Kerbal Space Program 2 it's a little bit dodgy a little bit glitchy and uh, yeah you can see things just weren't working so I went with a stack decoupler as well but trying to get this thing to be the right height where the wheels would actually function after using it and I realized now looking back on the video I was using stack decoupler instead of stack separator which probably half the problem not doing what I wanted it to do and the wheels would actually get stuck in the cargo bay floor as well so yeah it ended up being a little bit of a fail, the rover, but I think the whole rocket in itself was sort of a success. It seemed to work as I wanted it to work. It's just that rover, you'll see a little bit later, the rover becomes a little bit of an issue. And yeah, I'm just trying to mount this from the back instead, just to um, separate it a little bit better so it clears the floor and actually able to drive out somewhat. So I make some sort of makeshift decoupler but as you can see it just does not want to move now it's stuck in the floor <laughs> I fly up to try and get it to come out and yeah I thought right I've spent about three hours on this already I need it move on so we start designing the main stage here and I went with some large parts I'm trying to get it looking close to the real thing so I wanted to get this strut section in the middle and then obviously the main big booster and the two side boosters but the solid rocket boosters didn't look right scale wise so i had to make my own boosters here but getting the engine right getting the thrill fuel thrust to weight ratio was really proven quite tricky as you will see and there we go there's our basic shape anyways and also i should have done this onion staging but as the real ones were solid rocket boosters i didn't want to do that i just wanted to have them drop off and not give any extra fuel to the main tank this was already overpowered anyway it had a lot of fuel although coming down to it i don't think i was left with much fuel but there we go we're just trying to color this thing to match the real one now that little gray part in the middle and there we go so first launch attempt Here we go. And yeah, we were seriously underpowered there. <laughs> that is quite a long countdown, isn't it? I forgot how long the countdown is in Cable Space Program. So yeah. We readjusted, added some bigger engines, and launched again. And there we go. We also had to shrink the boosters down a little bit, add some extra uh, engines to the side of them. And it was still a little bit sluggish, but it was better. And yeah, it sort of killed the realistic look to it at that point because the boosters were a bit small. 
but it functioned, so that's all that mad. And also, with this first launch, I realised how uncontrollable parts are in Kerbal Space Program. As you can see, we were trying to get into orbit, slowly coming back into the atmosphere, and without any sort of control authority whatsoever. It, honestly, this game, this is what put us off, because it's just so insanely difficult to just do a simple mission like a moon mission <laughs> without things going wrong. But anyway, nevertheless, we added some control modules, as you can see in the main strut area. I was getting a little bit fed up at this point and just wanted to get the mission done. So we are doing that. And there we go. You can see already it's a lot more stable with the SES on there. So we are just going to commit to a roll program anytime soon. There we go. So our boosters aren't in the way once we separate. Because we don't want to hit them and destroy the main tank. That will be serious issues there. I've also noticed, I don't know if the graphics look worse. Since a couple of patches. It's on highest settings possible for the game. And the graphics look a little bit weird to me. I don't know if that's something people have noticed, but it's definitely something I've noticed. Anyway, here we go. Onwards and upwards, on with the launch. You've seen the launch plenty of times at Kells Pace Program, but we are going again. So, I'll get this out of the way. If you're new here, please do leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more space simulation content and other simulation stuff. I am trying to get a lot more out recently. Uh, get back on climbing the ladder you know anyway thank you very much if you have left that like down below it really helps out the channel likes and shares do help the most and also it's free so yeah there we go we're about to run out of fuel with our boosters so they are going to separate very soon there we go separate and we do leave it quite close and explode one of them there But this is where I started getting problems. Now, I don't know if it's a bug or if whether it was the craft was unsymmetrical or what. I know people might suggest it was the trim, but I untrimmed everything. I made sure everything was untrimmed all the time. But SES just didn't want to work. I had to put in con manual controls here to keep it stable while SES was on. I don't understand why. It just seemed... It SES wasn't doing any inputs like if I let go it was doing no input to try and correct it so I uh, use manual controls to keep this thing straight all the time and you'll see this throughout the mission I had to do this the whole mission it was basically flying manual the whole time I don't know what was going on I at some point I ended up to turn off SES because it wasn't working and there we go. I don't know why I had a little fireworks sound there when I did the separation as well at the first stage. And the fairing, yeah, it just glitched out because Kerbal Space Program 2. So I had to cut the engines just to get it to drop over here. And it does its unrealistic fall to the centre of the Earth. Yeah, this game is still full of plenty of bugs. And it's obvious why it's dropped in popularity a little bit I would say since launch give it time and it will get there I'm I'm certain of that but for now it's it's a struggle it is a struggle there we go finally in orbit anyway and I decided at this point let's do a save because everything goes wrong in Kerbal Space Program 2 and now you can see the struggle of just trying to select the moon as a target it I'm sure they fixed this in a patch, but they didn't fix it. <laughs> I don't know, it's it's strange. So anyway, setting a manoeuvre node to intersect the moon here. I want to crash course to get rid of this second stage. And then halfway along we'll do a polar orbit. I realised it's a lot more beneficial to do it halfway along than actually doing it now from an orbit. So yeah. That is what we'll do because obviously we want to land in the south pole of the moon because that's where the real one landed. So that is what we're going to do. 
And also, I don't think I've ever landed the South Pole of the Moon in Kerbal Space Program 1 or 2, ever. Or even Civil Rockets 2. Uh, Juno, New Ro new Origin? Oh, I forget the name. I wish they'd kept it at Civil Rockets 2. It was so easier. So much easier. So there we go, fly manual again. You can see the little triangles going crazy. That is me putting inputs in to keep it straight and on course. I don't know what it is. If anyone knows the reason behind SES just being terrible in this game, please do let us know in the comments below. Right, so there we go. We have got a crash course with Mun. Let's do another save because I forgot the key binded for quick save and then I realised, okay, I think it's F5. Ah, uh, yes, it is. So <laughs> I just did a quick check there. I thought that would be funny to just leave in. I forgot what it's been so long since I've played. I just I forget the key bindings. And there we go, just setting up the manoeuvre to go into a polar orbit. Now obviously I think this pusher stage, I'll call it, the propulsion stage, um I think that stays in orbit to keep in contact with the lander. So that is what we're gonna do. That is what we're going to try and do, we're going to get into orbit first and then initiate a landing rather than going straight into a landing. But KSP crack and track strikes again, which you will see in a little bit. There we go, look at that beautiful sunrise over the moon, over this earth there, Kerbin, sorry. And heading out towards our manoeuvre node. So watch this here, SES goes over towards the target, but just goes nowhere near it and kept going, so I just decided time warp anyway to stop the rotation and have to go back to manual control because this thing just does not want to stop spinning or going different targets, I don't know, it, it's, it was a nightmare, it was a headache, this whole mission. <laughs> But it was worth it to get this video out. Hopefully it's going to be popular. Uh, doubt it, really, but uh, yeah, we'll try. So there we go, just waiting for our launch timer to count down. So we can do our little burn. And it is a very little burn. 44 delta V does not take a lot. And there we go, snap out of that. Brilliant. We are now in polar intersect with the moon. So I just warp to that point where we enter the SOI because I don't want to time warp manually because it does I do tend to just fly past and forget what I'm doing. So there we go just try and get a nice circular orbit here for the orbit of stage to stay in. And again, we're just gonna have to manually fly this because I think it's I think it's the weight offset of the rover inside that is causing problems. But we do carry on and just keep going with it. It's the best we can do, really, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, see, as it's just nowhere near the target, so we're just time warp to stop our rotation anyway. And there we are, coming up on the beautiful moon. It looks a lot better in this editing window than it does in the game in real life. I hope it looks good on YouTube. Probably just does look better on YouTube. And there we go, getting a quick screenshot. And starting our burn. There we go. Coming in for a nice circular orbit around the moon. And the propulsion stage should stay up there. And provide feedback to the lander. There we go. So just separate the landing stage. And this is where problems begin. It just decides it doesn't want to go anywhere that I want it to point Oh, the nightmare this was. 
I really don't know where I was going wrong with it, but we'll crack on. We have to. We've getting this far. It took this long, and it was very late at night. <laughs> I wanted to get this video out. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure we were landing in the daytime, so I turned our orbit just ever so slightly into the sun there. So we're sort we're polar, but sort of not polar. We wanted to be in the sun when we land and not right bang in the shade because it's quite mountainous down there and I knew there would be a lot of heavy shadows. I didn't want to land in one of the heavy shadows. So that is why. Also, I don't like the way the poles look from orbit. Like, that is really messed up textures. I don't know what's going on there, whether they're meant to look like that. But it doesn't look very pretty. It looks horrible. Just thought I'd mention that while we're flying over here. So there we go, doing that manoeuvre. And look at the state of this thing, wobbling all over. We put the landing legs out and we start the time warp, which is a very bad idea. And there we go, you know our perfect circular orbit that we had planned? It is now decided to crash into the moon, which I thought this was what they'd fixed. I was looking for a lazy orbit. <laughs> I realised I haven't got it in this version. I haven't updated lazy orbit. That is not fixable. We're just going to have to let it crash and deal with it. I don't, I'm sure that the patch notes said that that was fixed as well. I don't know if it's, I need to make a new save or what. But there we go. There's another thing. The landing legs pop every time you exit time warp. And just fling the craft into a spin. Oh, this game. This game is a headache. Like, this should not be this hard, should it? A simple mission is landing on the moon. It should not be this hard. So time warp again to stop the rotation. Nothing. I put the landing legs away at time warp. And we still get that little bounce. But not as bad. Put SES on. It does absolutely nothing. So we use manual control to try and keep it as straight as possible. And still just feeling at that. Look at the state of this. <laughs> I'm so sorry guys, this is such, a, it was trying to be a realistic mission and it turned into a bit of a joke mission, but that's the way Kerbal Space Program crumbles unfortunately in KSP2, that's how it goes. And I hear getting that stupid warning, lack of sun exposure, I know there is no lack, there is no sun exposure, but I have RTS, RTGs, R, T, RTGs? I think they're RTGs, is that what they're called? On the side, so I don't need sun exposure. So stop talking to me every time I exit time warp. So there again, I got sick and I just started putting in, just hold it and I'll control it myself. And I thought, oh, we'll try pro retrograde again. Nope, it did not want to work, so I'm doing it manually. Coming in closer. We actually didn't leave that much fuel left. Once I realised the lander didn't have a lot of fuel. This would never have got back into orbit. Look there. 500 metres per second left. And we've, we've not even touched down yet. We're still 4,000 metres up. So yeah, I realised we were quite underfueled actually. But then... As we got closer to the ground, I realised how bumpy the South Pole actually is on Moon. And I was like, oh crap, where are we going to land now? So I was having a look, see where we can try and orientate ourselves. And I thought, ah, that looks that looks like a smooth bit. We'll try and point over that way. So here we are. Fine manoeuvres on the throttle is not working because shift doesn't have like a pressure sensor so I was trying my best to keep it still while manually flying and also manually adjusting the throttle here it was it was getting a bit of a handful 
it was getting a bit of a handful and I thought okay we're, we're doing it we're doing it this time okay throttle on throttle off throttle on throttle off and realized we are really sideways when it fix our our movement and ended up going up like right okay I need to manually adjust the throttle but also losing control because I'm looking at the throttle and I'm like, right, I don't know what I'm doing now. Which direction am I meant to be heading? Oh, no, that is not what I want to do. Just power up and, yeah. Quick save time. I went back up for attempt two. And hopefully SES is working. No, it is not. <laughs> so put the landing legs away. I do a little bit of time warping to stop our rotation. I figured, does this fix SES? Nope, not in the slightest, so we're going to go manual the whole way down and just hope for the best. That's what we always do, isn't it? Just hope for the best and see what happens. So this time we're stopping a little bit shorter, so hopefully it's a bit smoother. And it did turn out to be a little bit smoother ground than where we were landing the first time. So it worked out in our favour in that sense. There we are. See uh, what I mean by the big shadows because of the ma massive ridges. So yeah, also I was trying to avoid the hillsides so I did try and move over slightly, but I didn't want to lose control again. Bringing it down ever so slightly. And I thought, right, that's a slope. We don't want to land there. Let's move over a little bit to this light area over here. And I realise I'm starting to lose control again. Use the mouse for throttle control, but don't look at it this time. Just look at the orientation of the craft and hope you're not going to crash into the surface. And that is the main goal. So there we go. See our shadow coming into view, how close we actually are. And boom, cut the throttle and we are down. Thank God for that. So there we go. Doing a quick save before we go and try and deploy the rover. Again, I thought this might work in zero, in you know low gravity, so I left the impulse on on that, thinking it would chuck it out the doors, but no. The rover just did not work. I tried the wheels, and they just would not collide with the the surface. So unfortunately, the rover is stuck in there. So. I thought, well, we're just going to have to get a nice screenshot of the rover peeking out of the doors for the thumbnail. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more like this, please do let us know. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe because it is free. And yeah, we're, we're just going to have to let this um, crash into the ground because... Oh no, actually I didn't. No. I didn't let this crash into the ground. I actually saved it. I just put it into a higher orbit. Yeah, I remember that. I thought, okay, we want to be in con contact with our lander, so we'll just put it into an orbit again and leave it there. So there we go. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again.